you. This is definitely interesting, right? Because of the men's team, it's like a I mean, a completely different team. Um, really you only have two holdovers from the team from last year. And so Coach Byron Smith has completely brought in a whole new unit. And so uh, it's going to be exciting to get to learn these gentlemen and see kind of uh, what their strengths and their weaknesses are. Of course, their preseason rankings was the same as the ladies, which was sixth place. And I think that's just because at the end of the day, they don't listen. We got we both got new teams with a lot of new influx of players, right? The women's team, the top three scorers gone, right? You got to find out where you're scoring from, coming from, right? The men's team, the same thing, right? literally right the whole team is gone <laughs> so this is a completely new team we got this year uh but like i say i'm excited for for the individuals we got in right so of course kevin mcgaskey uh coming over and then another thing you that i looked at and i liked about uh about some of the players that coach byron brought in this year too was we have a lot of like local kids that's come in right you know what i'm saying so we got a lot of kids from houston from atascacita from missouri city right so a couple kids are coming in that that this is home for them and so i think that's exciting too for them to be able to come home be comfortable play in front of you know their family too as well and uh some guys who play well at other levels so again i think that's good to get guys who play some big minutes at some other um in some other conferences right play some big minutes in important games and important roles that's super important and so uh again i like the miss that he got right so kevin got mcgaskey uh charles lane jr is a graduate as well along with charles smith the fourth charles smith is coming over uh from old dominion he played his first two years at smu the last two years was at uh old dominion um and, and you can see it was a mixed bag he again wasn't asked to do much and i think that's kind of going to be the thing with this team is you got guys who wasn't asked to do a lot, who showed in spurts what they can be. But when you look at the distribution of shots, for example, uh, last year, right, um, the team averaged about, I think it was 64 uh, field goal attempts a game, right? Um, you had Will Douglas, who averaged 12 to 13 a game, right? You got Razas, who averaged nine. Um, you had uh, you had another player average nine, another average eight, right? So you look right there, right? You're talking about that. That's 40 shots. That's that's right there between those players. And so you got a completely new team coming in. So you're looking at okay, how are we going to distribute shot attempts across these new individuals and what they've done? A lot of these guys have never averaged that many shot attempts a game, right? And so some of these averages that we see and what they've done. Well, those shot attempts are going to increase. Those averages aren't going to stay the same. But I still like to see the fact that uh, that some of their averages are, are, are pretty good uh, for what they did, right? So we talk about so we talk about Charles Smith, right, at Old Dominion this past year, right? Um, we talk about three point percentage, shot thirty five percent from three. Uh, that's big, right? But again, he only put up sixty five shots all together, sixty five shots total. 43 of those with three pointers, right? And so again, he was definitely not a volume shooter or a volume scorer, right? The most attempts he had in the game last year was eight. And so this is a person who only averaged three and a half attempts a game last season at Old Dominion, but he's definitely going to be asked to shoot the ball a lot more um this year. Now, in his in his junior season at Old Dominion, he shot the ball a lot more right uh, 136 total attempts 98 three-point attempts right but again that's that's still way lower than when you think of the 500 uh attempts that will douglas put up right uh you think of the 276 uh, 312 attempts that will douglas put up when you think of the set 276 attempts that Ro rojas put up right so ross has put up so the you know these numbers are going to increase because he's going to be asked to score the ball a lot more than he was asked to score the ball at old dominion or at smu and so again right these percentages are going to change so in 2021 2022 season he only shot 28 percent from the three right whereas last year he shot 35 percent for three but again he shot half of the number of threes he shot in 21 22. so again those numbers are going to change but it's going to be interesting to see um as their shot attempts increase you know what they'll do for for these individuals now as we keep it going uh we got brian mouse who's again coming back ronald guys um yeah and and that's another thing that i noticed too um 
the 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 tallest player on this men's team is six eight, right? Six eight is the tallest player on this men's team. Uh, the rest are six six, six five, six four, right? And so at the end of the day, there's gonna be some teams that you go up against, especially out of conference, that you're li- you're literally gonna get killed on the boards, right? And so, you know, we're gonna definitely have to find a way to fight and claw. But at the end of the day, you know, that's gonna be an issue probably that that, that we're gonna have to deal with all year. Now, Ronald Giles Jr., this is another guy that I'm excited to see what he can bring here, right? Because this is a guy that's coming from St. Um, um, St. Francis, right? Uh, up in up in the New York area. I mean, in uh, Maryland, uh, sorry, the New York area, right? And so he's a guy who's a starter at St. Francis, um, both in 2021 and in 2022. He averaged 10 points and three and a half rebounds, 21-22. Average eight point eight point seven points and two rebounds um, in twenty uh, in twenty twenty and twenty twenty one, right? And so this is a guy who's played right again some great competition, played in a lot of games. He averaged um, he had ten games over double figures um, in in that twenty twenty one twenty twenty two season. So this is also another guy I think that can come in that's not a volume shooter but that can give you some consistency as far as getting the ball in the, in the, in the basket. Right. And so this is another big, uh, a big pickup, I think for the team as well. Uh, we look at Jonathan Nash, we got Orlando Hort Jr., which is one of the freshmen on this team, Nicholas, uh, G- um, Gazelis. I don't know how he says last name. Right. But Nicholas, uh, Gazelis, I don't know. Anyway, he's coming from Atasca Cedar, right? He was at Atasca Cedar High School, played at Montana State in the Big Sky Conference. Uh, this is another guy, right, that I'm excited to see what he can bring. Uh, when you look at his percentages, as far as what he shot, especially from the three, um, this is a, another guy, right, that shot it well from the three in 2020, 2021, and also in 21, 2022. 35% from three in 20 and 21. 36% from three in 21, 22. Now last year, his numbers definitely dipped a lot, but again, um, he, he did, he didn't play as, as many minutes as he played the two prior years. Right. And so he went down to, um, uh, where he averaged 18 minutes and then 14 minutes a game to only averaging nine minutes a game, um, went down to only 28, three pointers that he put up, uh, last year and shot seven, 18%. Right. So again, you know, it's like, hey, is he the is he the junior year guy or is this the guy from the senior year? And I think a lot of the players that you see coming in where they had a strong junior year and then it looks like they had some time taken up playing time taken away or whatever happened right in their in your senior years. And now they're coming out either as a graduate or as a senior. Right. Um, to have an opportunity, right, to, to play uh, a little bit more, right, and have more opportunity. But this is a guy that can score um, the ball. Um, he also is a guy that played big, big minutes in um, the Big Sky Championship game, right, um, in the year 2022, right? So had big minutes in a, a Big Sky Championship game, put up 15 points in that championship game, right? And so this is a guy that you, uh, again, want to um, want to watch for because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, this is a guy who I think is going to get uh, a lot of opportunities this year. Again, got Javante Hopkins, Justin Nimmer, another guy that's coming over from another program. Cyrus Grisby is coming over from St. Francis, Brooklyn. And so he is also another guy to watch out for. He was a big scorer in uh, in, a, in a JUCO ranks uh, last year, St. Francis, Brooklyn. Um, not that well, right? But this is the 6'8 guy you have on your team. And so this is a bigger body, 6'8", 225. That again is gonna you're gonna need at times to play in the post, right? So he's gonna be an interesting guy that you add. Of course, Traylon Porsche, who's also came in to play football, is also on the basketball team as well. Mark Anthony McReed, Chris Felix Jr., and also Andre Nunley, who is one of the holdovers from from last year. And then also we got uh, McKinley Harris, right, which is another holdover from last year as well, right? So. Uh, looks like it's going to be a good mix, right? I'm interested to see again, right, the distribution uh, on shots, right? Because you brought in a lot of new guys, and so it's going to be interesting to see how they gel, and also on the boards, because you know you did a good job of on last year of this team not getting beat on the boards. Um, actually, the margin I think was you know we we uh, we out rebounded opponents by two, 
last year on the boards, right? And so you need to keep that together, right? Because that means you're going to be in games at the end of the day, right? You know, defense don't stop until you get the ball. And so at the end of the day, we got to control the boards on the defensive end, especially um, not give up second chance opportunities. But with a team this small, you know, you're going to really have to fight to make sure you control the board. So that's going to be interesting, too, as well. Of course, with the coaching staff, Byron Smith, head coach, Spencer Robertson, men's assistant coach, Johnny Williams, and then also Jacob Galindo. Right. And so when we look at the out of conference schedule. Out of conference schedule this year, only two home games, Kansas Christian College on the sixth, Right. Which is this upcoming uh, Monday. And then you got North American on December 18th. That's it for uh, for home games for out of conference. So the, the men's team will be on the road a lot, on the road a lot. Of course, going up to Seattle University, going to Washington State, uh, Abilene, and UT Martin, and Eastern Kentucky are in a, um, I think, like a round robin that they're playing. And then you got Tulane. You go to Iowa State, Northern Iowa. Got Rice here in Houston. UTSA in San Antonio. And then College Station of Texas a Now, those last three games, I'm happy because even though you are on the road, they're not like they don't have like travel so far because you already had to travel through first beginning of your schedule. So kind of giving them a chance to kind of be closer to home, um, you know, be close at home was good. So we should have been hosting Rice this game th- uh, this year. Have we ever hosted Rice for a home game? That's interesting uh, for the men's basketball team. It was interesting to see that uh, last year we averaged a little bit over a thousand. So we were number 10 as far as SWAC attendance last year for the men's game. So over a thousand people coming to the men's game, which is pretty good. You know, I was actually shocked to see that we averaged that many people for the men's basketball game, but it's going to be cool to see if we can uh, keep that momentum going right in and, and get some people out to the games uh, to watch this team and support this team. Right. So of course conference games, same as the women. Right. Um, so, you know, you got the same slate of games. Uh, again, this is going to be an interesting year. I think we're going to be able to tell once we kind of get into see some of these out of conference games played, how this team gels together, uh, because this is completely new team, completely new faces. Right. Like this is not (laughs) this is not like a team that's that's been here and has been building. And that's kind of the thing that scares me a little bit with, you know, you have a complete new faces coming in because how quickly do they gel together? And, and can they play, man? Some of these other schools have a lot of people that's returning, people that been in the program for a couple of years. And so it, that continuity is able to be able to be there. Right. But again, I do tr- trust Coach Byron. Like, I think he's shown that he should have some trust put in him. And so I'm still waiting to see, man, and excited to see some of these players that we got, because I think we got some guys who have shown that they can they can do well. So now I think they we got three or four guys who come in and now they have a bigger spotlight. They they are they are they're coming from a bigger pond, right? And now they're coming to a smaller pond. And let's see, right, who's able to step up and really show that they can be that guy. I think Will Douglas had his opportunity and show what he can do. This is now another opportunity for some guys to see what they can do as well, right? So, so yeah, man, that's the end of our season preview for our men's and women's basketball team. Again, the first game for um, for the uh, men's team is going to be on the 6th. It's a home game against Kansas Christian. It is going to be in the Baby Dome. Uh, so, again, make sure you're there. Uh, it's the day right after the SWAC, Women's SWAC Soccer Championship game, which hopefully PV is also playing in, right? So, that's, again, that's why I said, right, we got a lot of big things going on right now throughout this week, man, with all the things transpiring on homecoming, with all the things transpiring with the women's soccer, with the volleyball team coming to end, football team still in the SWAC West race. It's a good time of year, man, with all this stuff going on. So just make sure you support PB Nation, man. And again, if you guys have not done it yet, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you share it with others, man. Make sure you share it with others and let them know.